You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and it's March 31st, 2021. Well, you know that the COVID, particularly the reaction to COVID by various state governments, has left many of you hurting, many of you needing help, and many of you pretty much uh, un or reluctant recipients of government largesse. If you're like me, you've never taken a penny from the government. In your life, you've only given them money, uh, which I guess is the way it should be, uh, certainly if you're an entrepreneur, but you've got to upgrade your, your strategies. You've got to do business differently because we're in a new world. And somebody who's been out ahead of it, a thought leader, someone who's really been able to figure this out uh, is our next guest, uh, Wayne B. Titus III. Wayne, you're a, a CPA, a financial advisor, and a lot more. More importantly, you grew up in an entrepreneurial home. Uh, your father was a car dealer, and you watched what hard work was all about. Hey, by the way, out there, if you've got any questions or comments, tell us how COVID has affected your business. We'd really like to hear. The email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. So, Wayne, uh, hey, you know, when you were growing up, you watched your father work really hard, you joined him by his side at the dealership. And here we are, uh, hard work and all that. Uh, we seem to have been penalized for it during the COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic here. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as a CPA and as an accountant now, I, I'm seeing a lot more from, from small businesses, uh, clients of ours, entrepreneurs. Uh, and you've got real lopsided results of, of what's happened. I know, uh, Kind of before we started, we talked about you know Amazon and and Costco and some of these other large companies are doing very well and the small entrepreneurial ventures are really suffering. But I actually see that spectrum on the entrepreneurial side as well. Some entrepreneurial businesses are doing just great. Others are kind of in the middle, and then you know others are in the toilet. Um, and and that's the thing I think that is uh, kind of unusual is the way it's been so lopsided. Usually, when you have an economic downturn everybody's suffering to some great extent. And, and in, in this case, it seems to be more impactful, obviously, in specific industries, the restaurant industry, you know, the, uh, uh, the industries like movie theaters, concert venues, other, you know, other places like that. And so this lopsided uh, impact is really causing some, some issues out there. Even, even businesses that were highly successful, I talked to a client actually yesterday, uh, their accounts receivable greater than 90 days in December uh, of 2019 was zero. And this uh, past December, December of 2020, their greater than 90 days receivables were like $7.1 million, <laughs> right? So, I mean, that is a very large business impact. You can't, it's very difficult to survive that kind of, uh, of an impact. And so there's, there's people that are out there that close their businesses and people that are still struggling to try to keep them open. All right. So you know people who've done both, those who are struggling and those who have closed. Do you think the people whose businesses, they've had to shut them down, go bankrupt, do you think uh, most of them will be starting new businesses again? Or are they just going to look for jobs or, or retire early and go on Social Security? What's your take on that? Yeah, that's a great question. And I don't really know if I can give a specific, you know, 100% answer, because I think you're, what you're going to see is varying stages of, of things. I mean, obviously, the bankruptcy process is going to derail many people from getting back into business, because unless they've got the, the cash available to start to start up again, uh, to bootstrap their companies, uh, you know, that would be a very difficult thing to do after bankruptcy, because you're basically having to give up uh, maybe, maybe many of those assets to, to, you know, kind of alleviate some of the pain the creditors have uh, causing you pain. So uh, I think, you know, you're going to see some that may be able to do that in, in a way, and uh, many others are not. And I think uh, what's going to happen, most of those places are going to close. 
somebody else is going to maybe, if there's a demand, is going to open up in their place and they're going to be the beneficiaries uh, when everything starts turning around of that. You know, it's, it's kind of the last person standing, you know, gets all the toys or gets all the cash or however you want to put it. Um, so positioning yourself, I think, as an entrepreneur to, to uh, avoid or kind of uh, react to these kinds of situations is very important. Obviously, COVID is one of those things where it would have been very difficult to, to put together a business plan uh, or a business case or a continuity plan to, to, to predict this kind of uh, impact. But I do think that entrepreneurs need to be sure that they are thinking about those things as they are extending credit or receiving extension, extension of credit, you know, reinvesting in their business uh, and making sure that they can survive this kind of a, an up and down in the future. Now, obviously, there's some who've cheated the system, the PPP and all of that. Uh, but others, you know, business might not have been that good. They might have had debts that they wanted to get rid of. And this could be the opportunity to just chapter the company out, take it into a chapter 11, clean up the balance sheet and up the profits there. Have you seen that happening? Uh, I haven't seen it happening yet. Clearly, that'll be, uh, you know, that'll be part of their strategy. Uh, reorganization of debt is an important aspect of things. Uh, I know a, a number of businesses that were trying to reorganize, um, you know, through some of the, the programs, the Main Street land, lending program that was available uh, previously that's now uh, closed down was one of those avenues to basically restructure debt and, uh, you know, position yourself moving forward. But very few businesses were actually able to take advantage of those because the banks weren't in a position to actually uh, administer or help businesses apply in that process as quickly as they needed to. So the, the timing of that program um, wasn't open long enough. But, you know, reorganization is certainly a valid strategy. I'm not seeing that yet, but I suspect it will definitely be one of the approaches. All right. So as far as these government lending programs, PPP, EIDL, and all that, what are the shortcomings of them? Why have uh, so many businesses that could have gotten them not even bothered applying for them? Uh, what's up with that, Wayne? Well, I think historically, if you look at back at the CARES Act, you know, it was 860 pages of, of legalese. And, uh, you know, the unfortunate thing is most of our laws are significant and voluminous. And so having uh, advisors that are available to understand that information are a very small community of advisors. And information that gets out to the public is, is not uh, maybe well interpreted. Uh, so I think it's, it's important to understand that any of these programs, it's, it's, it's important to have a good interpretive advisor. You know, there's three kinds of advisors that are out there. The, the kinds that are kind of paternalistic, they tell you what to do, but they don't really give you the background or the understanding of, of why they are telling you to do it. There's informative advisors. Those advisors are the ones that say, hey, here are all the pages of the CARES Act. You read it. Tell me what you want to do. That's not very helpful. And then interpretive advisors, which I think are the most important and few and far between. And those are the advisors that are going to go out, do the research, get an understanding of what's available, have a deep understanding of what your situation is with your business, and then start to make recommendations and talk to you about alternative solutions. You know, interpretive advisors kind of help you see around corners or see ahead to the pitfalls and then develop strategies to, to overcome, uh, you know, those, those future challenges. Uh, and those, those advisors are kind of in short supply. All right. So when we talk about uh, the government programs, what's still available to entrepreneurs out there to kind of help them get to the next level and get through the remnants of the pandemic? Don't just survive. Thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Silver One Resources is an exploration and development company backed by strategic investors Eric Sprott and SSR Mining. At Silver One's Candelaria Mine Project in Nevada, there is already a historic resource estimated at 127 million ounces of silver, which Silver One is developing and advancing. The company's Phoenix Silver Project, located within the Arizona Silver Belt, is an early stage exploration project on which native silver vein fragments have been discovered near surface 
surface. One grab sample assayed an astounding 14,688 ounces per ton. Yes, that's right, ounces, not grams. Silver One has tremendous exploration potential, is extremely leveraged to the price of silver, and is cashed up and poised to increase shareholder value. Silver One trades in New York under the ticker SLVRF and in Toronto under the ticker SVE. To learn more, go to silverone.com. That's silverone.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Yeah, as I said, you know, this the, the impacts have been kind of uh, lopsided. They did um, bring back elements of the PPP program. Uh, they the, Both houses passed the uh, extension uh, that hopefully, uh, if it's not done already today, uh, Biden, uh, President Biden is going to uh, sign into law. And so they're extending that, uh, you know, because th- th- those programs were going to expire March 31st. So, uh, you know, having this another round of, of lending, again, because there's so few advisors that are helping clients figure this out, um, many would have not been able to access that. But now that deadline has been extended to May 31st. So I think the first thing is the PPP. Uh, there was the American Rescue Relief Plan, which was an additional $7.25 billion that was added to the PPP. And they started to uh, earmark some of that for different um, applicants. And so you've got uh, some additional nonprofits that are uh, eligible for some of that, but there's restrictions, restrictions on lobbying and the number of employees. Some of these things were not kind of written into that initial law. Uh, there's this shuttered venue operations grant, which is basically uh, a grant that would go to independent live music venues, performing arts centers, movie theaters, uh, museums. You kind of think about some of those as being not for profit, but there are many for profit uh, enterprises that are like that. Um, that's going to be combined with the PPP. So if you get something on the SVOG grant, it's going to be deducted, uh, or the PPP will be deducted from that total grant. Uh, there's uh, the American Rescue Plan Act, which is an additional two, uh, $28.6 billion specifically for restaurants uh, and targeted for that. There is uh, RRF grants, which basically are, those are the specific one for restaurants, bars, lounges, tasting rooms, and things like that. So if you've got you know, a small, you know, in Michigan, we've got a lot of small microbrews and uh, small distilleries that could benefit from these types of things. But basically, there's now prohibitions against publicly traded companies getting this support. Or if you're uh, if you own more than uh, or if you own 20 restaurants or something like that, you're not going to be eligible for those kinds of things. So there's there's different levels of of uh, programs dependent upon the size of the business. Um, costs that you can include in those RRF grants is basically payroll costs and uh, mortgage interest, utilities, maintenance. That similar similar things to what was uh, there previous with the PPP. Uh, some of the other programs that are out there, there's an interesting one on COBRA subsidy. So if you had employees that, uh, you know, uh, left employment or were terminated and they're on COBRA, there's a credit potentially that will help uh, terminated employees pay for COBRA during this time period. That's actually one of the problems. If you lose your job uh, and you can't get insurance, you're, you know, you go on COBRA and then after a period of time, that COBRA becomes very expensive. So there's a credit there. Uh, There's an increase in what's called employer provided dependent care assistance. So if you work for an employer that that provided a plan for you to put some of your payroll aside to pay for your your kids to go into daycare or those kinds of things, they actually increased the limit for uh, for the year. They raised it to $10,500. Usually it's $5,250. So that's real helpful. Um, There's some benefit plan changes. So if your company provides some sort of a pension benefit for employees. Very few do, but there's been some changes there. Uh, But then there's another thing that was added here, and there maybe many of your listeners are going to be impacted here because many entrepreneurs are gig workers. You know, these are the workers that are out there maybe working at 1099 with uh, Uber or TaskRabbit or Lyft or one of these other companies. And previously, those companies did not have to report 1099 uh, unless those employees received more than $20,000. Now they've changed that in this law and reduced that level to 600. So every employee or every uh, contract worker that's that's receiving payments from one of these entities is gonna receive a 1099 for anything above $600. Um, so that's kind of gathering more information and to determine that tax pool. 
Um, so this could be a negative impact for those folks that aren't properly recording that income in their tax returns. They're going to be forced to do that because they're now uh, these companies are now required to issue these 1099s for anything above six hundred dollars. Right. What about uh, uh, small business loans with companies that are kind of out of collateral? There is it a such a thing for them? Uh, there's not much there. Uh, the Main Street Lending Program is one of the bigger uh, programs for that kind of thing. Um, and so I haven't seen a lot in, in loan programs. There are, dependent upon the, the locality that you work or that you have your business in, there may be some Main Street Lending Programs through the, through the uh, Downtown Development Authority that you, uh, uh, you know, that, you, that may be in your area. I know in Michigan, the Michigan uh, Development Authority has grants that are available. Uh, but typically they're not loans to recapitalize. And that's actually, I think, one of the things that's really missing for some of these entrepreneurs. All they really need to do is, is uh, re recapitalize to, to restructure their loans with their banks. And many banks um, are working with their clients and many banks are not. Um, and so when push comes to shove, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to, to trust that a bank is going to work with an entrepreneur to get things restructured. I just haven't seen a lot of good uh, good things in that area. Right. Yeah, I understand. Well, you should take a look at Wayne's book, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Financial Well-Being. And you can just go over to Wayne B. Titus, T-I-T-U-S 3.com and obtain a copy there. Or, of course, it's on Amazon. And uh, Wayne, if people want to find out more about you, uh, besides the website I gave, what's the best place to reach you? Yeah, you can look me up on LinkedIn, Wayne B. Titus 3, the Roman numeral 3, so I, I, I. Uh, and the website's Wayne B. Wayne Brown, uh, Wayne B. Titus 3, the number 3.com. All right, excellent. There's a link in the show notes to this interview on Financial Survival Network, and you should sign up for our free newsletter right away, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Wayne, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing that with us, and I hope... Uh, You've helped some people and some people will reach out to you for assistance and figure out uh, how to improve their lot and how to move forward. Carrie, it was my pleasure. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.